So, we have an envelope here, and this envelope contains 10 pieces of a light-sensitive paper that is called cyanotype paper. And what we're going to do is put these pieces of paper on the ground in the shade. This is my home. It's, it's shaded. And we're going to go into our junk drawer. This is the home's junk drawer where you just inevitably put everything you don't know what to do with. In this drawer, we're going to pull out 10 items, whatever looks good, the pizza table thing, some buttons. We have these, uh, I believe they're rhombus shapes. They, uh, here's a binder clip. And what am I going for here? Ooh, a spring, that's gonna be good. I like this Ikea, you know, two ounce class. Let's see, this looks like Han Solo in Lego form. And this is a wombat friend. There's some other stuff in here I know, but we'll, we'll find it and put it on the cyanotypes in just a moment. So let's start with our rhombus shapes. These are just pattern blocks, and I'm going to put them on this cyanotype to form uh, a hexagon? Hexagon, hex, six, I don't know. And I'm going to put the pizza table on the cyanotype. Basically, all of these items are going to cast a shadow onto this paper once I open the window and let light into the room. So we're going to try to find the most interesting, <laughs> whoops, the most interesting ways that we can place these items. And when the, the light does hit them, we'll see what the shadow looks like. Here's some wooden cube shapes. And I'm trying to keep these cyanotype pages kind of aligned so they're all, you know, in order and, and roughly facing the same direction as the sun. So we have some consistency in our finished product. And I don't know what any of these are going to do. These are, these are all new to me these cyanotype possibilities. So these are some buttons. Let's see what they do. We got Han Solo and, and Wombat Friend. They can both go on the cyanotype. They look happy together. And you know, you never know what it's gonna look like until you actually put, oh, there goes the spring. We got it. I'm gonna bend that paper a little bit. That'll keep the spring kind of in line. And here's the shot glass. And I'm just gonna put that on the paper this way uh, and see how it looks. Okay. I'm ready to go open the window and let natural light in. Yeah, this is uh, March, and I believe what we're seeing right now is about an hour's worth of time. And you can see the sun was moving across very quickly. That's, that's not because I have commanded time to move faster, it's because that was the time-lapse section where I sped things up. And as you can see, I turned this cyanotype around because I'm just, well, I'm curious to see what'll happen when I change things about it. So now that these have been made, you know, exposed basically in the sun, we can now actually develop them using ordinary, plain old, everyday tap water. And that just comes right out of the faucet. I've actually taken it out of the faucet and put it in the spray bottle, but that's just for ease of video demonstration, so I don't have to take everything over to the sink. You can also develop these in a, in a tub or in a sink. So I'm spraying the water straight onto the cyanotype, and you can see it's already amazingly changing. It is, it is doing all the chemical things that photo developing does, but we get to do it with just ordinary water. And I'm using fast motion just to make it look a little faster. You can, you can tell when it goes fast motion because there will be a line of sun that moves very quickly on the left. And now I'm drying them. This is a window screen, by the way. So if you have the ability to take a window screen out of your window, they make a great drying slash developing rack. There goes the rest of the sun. Okay, so it's been about an hour and they've now dried. There they are. I'm going to put their original items back on top so we can get a sense for the shadows as they were made. And there we go. Our cyanotypes that we've made together are now finished. And this is the shot glass. There's, if you look, there's a decent amount of detail in these images. Cyanotypes have tons of resolution possible. See the buttons? I, I kind of see, well, it doesn't matter what I see. And then there's our Lego and our Wombat. And here's our cubes. You can see different, different types of tonality came out. I like the rubber band. I don't know. It looks like prokaryotic life. I see a conch shell in that. Oh, uh, cube. Well, it's not cube. Shape. That pizza table looks like a tripod attacker from War of the Worlds. That's a binder clip, but it could be anything else. And I think the spring is my favorite. I, I think springs really lend themselves to good shadow cyanotypes because they have this 
this helix, you know, it spirals up. And I just think that looks really neat. I am so glad that we got to make these cyanotypes together because it's a joy to share any creative process with someone else. I'm going to put them back in the envelope for now. I'll probably forget they exist. And then one day I'll look at them and find them and remember that we made them together. And I hope that you had a good time and that you decide to make cyanotypes after this because there's just unlimited potential in the medium of cyanotype. And if you can harness that potential, you're already ahead of the game.